This is a jet-powered go-kart! But it's also a jet-powered grill! I'm Chris, he's Nick. Let me show you how we got here. This is my friend Nick Juhas, adventure seeker, YouTube creator, Netflix show host. We became buddies a couple years ago and we've been looking for a good video idea to collaborate on. From the beginning, we knew we wanted to do a land speed record, so we had an excuse to buy a jet engine. He and I are both married and you have to justify these kinds of purchases. We knocked around ideas for a while and eventually Nick threw out the idea to take an ice chest, strap on a jet engine, bolt on some skis with the goal being to go to a frozen lake and set a land speed record. This was a genius idea. I'm one of those all-in kind of people, so immediately ordered all the material, and I was multiple months in when one day I get a text from Nick that said, hey, I've changed my mind, forget the ice chest, let's make this a jet-powered grill. Welcome back to day one. Now, I hear some of you saying, Chris, it sounds like you're letting someone else dictate your content. Here's the deal, we're both getting a video out of this, but Nick is a science guy, not so much a builder, and I'm kind of a builder, but I have no money. So how this is gonna work is he's gonna pay for it, but I'm gonna build it, and if it works, he'll come to Texas and we'll set a land speed record <laughs> for a grill. Uh, we're starting with the wheels. In Oh. Oh. I got step one, have a rolling chassis. We've got that now. I got rid of the flimsy legs that come on grills and we now have a sturdy frame. We now have four wheels, steering, seat, and disc brakes. Same dimensions as it was before. It's the same width, depth, and height. Uh, even with the tires on it, it's the same height as it was before. I want to do any accommodations to make it more comfortable to ride. Uh, and it's definitely not. Now I've never worked with jet engines before and I just fired this one up for the first time the other day. And if you've never heard one of these start up in person, it's wild. What I'm learning is that they have a lot of energy, but a lot of it is wasted in heat, which is giving me an interesting idea. What I think would be cool and would really fit that moniker of jet powered grill would be to find a way to try and have this engine pull double duty. Meaning yes, we want the engine to drive it forward, but if we can somehow channel that heat and get it into the body, whatever this part is called, then we could potentially be grilling with jet engine power. Does that make sense? So I have two criteria for success. It has to be able to cook with jet engine power and it has to be the fastest jet powered grill in the world. For cooking with jet engine power, it has to cook real food, it has to be edible, and it has to be eaten by someone. But for the speed part, the current record is zero. So what benchmark are we chasing? The average speed limit in a US city is 30 miles an hour, which I thought that might be a good bar to chase. We could keep up with the flow of traffic. That's kind of fun to say, but then I thought, I, I, this is America, we have speed limits like this. 85 miles an hour, the, I, this, is, this is the benchmark. I wanna go as fast as legally permissible in my country. So then how do we get this on that? The easy answer would be to just bolt it to the back, but then how do we channel the heat from the exhaust to cook? On top of that, now you just have a jet powered go-kart that happens to have a grill for a roof. The owner's manual says the exhaust gases of this are like, like 500 degrees Celsius, which is, like a million in Fahrenheit. So when I activated my second brain cell, I thought, okay, instead of trying to channel all that heat around, what if I just bolt it to the front, bolt it to the front and blast that heat right into the grill? So it'll be a pull style engine versus a push, which is fine. It'll be a lot simpler to fabricate. Plus it guarantees we'll be cooking with what? So I'm going to cut a hole on both ends of the body of the grill, slide in this three and a half inch steel pipe. Oh. Welded up nice and tight on both ends so we don't introduce any new toxins into our food. Jet engine will be mounted to the front. The thrust will blast down the steel pipe, hopefully driving us forward. The steel pipe should act as a heating element, hopefully getting hot enough to cook our food, making this a truly jet-powered grill. Come on! I cannot be more excited that none of the jet components are visible from the outside. I'd love to say that I planned that, but it's just nice when things work out. More importantly though, can those components make it move? Oh. 
All right, it moves. We can check that off the list, but does it get hot enough to cook anything? To find out, I turned it on and I let it run for about 30 minutes. And after half an hour, it never got hotter than 200 degrees inside the grill, which is kind of unfortunate. Basically, this is the world's most complicated food dehydrator. What I think's happening is that the air is just moving too fast. All the heat's just blasting out the back. So I have welded up this baffle of sorts. It slides down, sits about halfway down in the tube, and I'm hoping this slows the air down just enough to let the heat radiate into the body of the grill. 414. How do you like your burgers? Uh, well done. You good with well done? Excellent. Uh, so I really wish these weren't frozen. It might take an embarrassing amount of time. I think we've got them engaged, at least in the concept of what, what this is. Are these burgers edible? Should be. Dude, it's got grill sear marks. Look at that. That is amazing. It's slow. Shockingly slow, but it's working. Hey, we might be done. Uh, give it a few more minutes. I'm scared I'm gonna poison somebody. Hey sir, that is the first jet grilled burger in the world. Here you go sir, there you go. Uh, I forgot about condiments. But that's probably a little hot. It's a weird, interesting feeling. Anytime I go to the track to do something no one else has been dumb enough to try before. This is Cedar Creek Dragway, it's in Kemp, Texas, and these are the same guys that let us come out to do the world's fastest trash can video a couple years ago. Now, believe it or not, Nick and I are meeting face to face for the first time today, and since he's gonna be driving the grill in his video, that's a weird sentence, I'm giving him a rundown of how I think everything works to the best of my understanding. Dude, it's so sick. So it's, it, it does not encourage good posture. <laughs> and you have to steer under your knees. Ah, it's even better. Oh oh. <laughs> now, surprisingly and embarrassingly, we somehow got to this point and I still haven't fully test driven the grill yet. I have very poor time management. There's a lot of question marks and a lot of unknowns, so I am starting to get really anxious. I've driven at 50, maybe 100 feet. So first we're lining up for a shakedown run that probably should have happened a month ago. I mean, I haven't tested the brakes. It has a short wheelbase. Is that gonna make it unstable? Is that gonna make the steering feel twitchy? And let's ignore the fact that there's a jet engine a couple inches from my face that's doing 100,000 RPM. What's the air gonna do to the stability when it slams into this big box above my head at speed? Because if you've been watching my channel for the last year or so, you know the big catastrophe that's gonna be on my mind is will this wanna flip over? That was 39 miles an hour at 50% throttle. That, that's probably a little fast for a shakedown run, but it felt so good. It felt so good. Apparently the fastest <laughs> running you ever. I'm feeling better now. <laughs> that was a confidence boost. It felt predictable, it felt planted, which is you know what you want when you drive a machine you built in a shed. I'm not sure what I thought I was gonna experience. Uh, my ears felt like they were bleeding, even with the earplugs in, it was just incredibly loud. And I could feel the heat from the exhaust on my head, even through the helmet and through the body of the grill, and that just it, it surprised me. Now, it's been said to me by multiple YouTubers that I don't add enough drama and urgency to my videos, and if I would, you guys would watch longer and engage more with the videos. And I don't know if that's true, but uh, I'll give it a shot. Right now, we have just enough fuel for one more run. 
the grill gets about two gallons per mile, and we are time zones away from the nearest jet fuel station. Believe it or not, there's medical staff that's here. There's five cameras with camera operators being paid to be here. Hotels and flights have been booked. The track's rented. The pressure is real to get this right on this run. What if you gunned it right off the bat? Okay, don't hit cameras, don't die, stop <laughs> at the end, got it. Ready, do a trigger, prime vap, burner on, okay. Like that goes up with my anxiety. Oh yeah. Thank you for making this happen. Of course, nice dude. Job, 45 miles an hour. That was 100% throttle right from the beginning. And it just stopped accelerating. Is it 85? No. But am I disappointed? Not really. Impressive. It's faster than I want to crash. Yeah. The point of these weird projects is to build something and take them to the limit. And I, I feel confident that we've done that. Think of it this way. We were at full throttle longer than this engine was ever intended to be, pushing a weight well beyond anything this engine was intended to push. Eventually, it stopped accelerating. And what that tells me is that with this engine and my design, we've hit an aerodynamic limit. Could someone smarter with a better design go faster? Most definitely. And I hope you're watching and I hope you build it. But until then, the world world record for the fastest jet powered grill in the world is 45 miles an hour. Thanks for watching and don't forget